Hi everyone, my name is Yunbom, and I'm going to present our work about evolution of real-world hypergraphs. We first examine macroscopic patterns, and then we get into our random graph model which reproduces these patterns. Most of data sets that we are familiar with are interconnected. This type of data can be represented by a graph, which consists of nodes and edges. In general, nodes indicate objects of our interest and edges correspond to relationships between these objects. For example, in citation networks, nodes are papers, an edge between two nodes is given if one paper refers to another. Obviously, these graph datasets have drawn a lot of attention from researchers. They have seek to uncover hidden properties in real-world graphs, and these efforts have given us a lot of fruitful insights into them. Among many well-known properties, the Paolo distribution of degrees is probably the most famous one, and you may heard of it several times in other names, such as the 80 versus 20 law in some literature. Moreover, this phenomenon has been observed in various domains such as physics, biology, economy, and so on. Not only for this, something counterintuitive was also revealed. First, real graphs tend to get denser rather than uh, to stay sparse. Also, distances between objects generally decrease rather than increase. The establishment of such properties is definitely important because we may consider them in the design and analysis of graph algorithms. People took one more step to get insight into what mechanism result in these patterns. So they have proposed several models reproducing these patterns. For example, one of the proposed explanation is preferential attachment, which means node with high degree are more likely to get a new neighbor, and which is particularly helpful in explaining the richer get richer phenomenon. Some other models such as the forest fire model and chronicle graphs were also proposed. However, this traditional type of graphs may fail to represent all kinds of relational data set. Let's consider a co-authorship network. In this case, this relationship in the form of co-authorship may involve three or more authors. However, edges in graphs only relate and most two authors. How can you represent this kind of data by using the graph language? In this case, we utilize a graph whose nodes are authors and edge is given if they co-authored a paper. For example, when three authors work together, we should put an edge between every pair of authors. However, at this point, you should notice that we are losing information in a sense that if you are only given with this graph construct in this way, we are not certain whether these three authors actually work in a group. The reason is, uh, there is a chance that these three authors may have never wrote a paper together in the past. To cut this long story short, this information loss coming from the simple reduction may be deadly to performance of algorithms. To address this limitation, a natural solution is to allow for more flexible edges which involve three or more nodes. This extended graph is called a hypergraph, which consists of nodes and hyper edges. In fact, an ordinary graph we have been talking about is a special case of this hypergraph in a sense that the size of all hyper edges are just fixed as two. Actually, hypergraphs can be employed to represent more diverse interactions of ad nodes. For example, uh, hypergraphs can represent by list of users and co-authorship without the loss of information unlike before. What's more is, uh, considering high-order interactions is helpful for harder tasks. So, it's obvious to adopt the hypergraph language in many applications. For example, you may use it in computer vision recommendation system, and graph learning. But a tragedy is, our current understanding of real-world hypergraph is not as thorough as that of real-world graphs. Due to various edge size, it is way harder to establish sort of general rules for real-world hypergraphs. So as an alternative, people take a detour by using the simple reduction technique which is explained before, and then investigating some properties on this, this on this reduced one. Driven by the importance of hypergraphs, we seek to answer the question 
what can you observe from real-world hypergraphs? To this end, we examined four static and three dynamic patterns of real-world hypergraphs at macroscopic level by revisiting well-known properties of ordinary graphs and by devising new measures to capture high-order interactions. Furthermore, we would like to answer the question of how, what can be local dynamics on nodes which result in these patterns, especially by proposing a random graph model. To make sure we are on the same page, let me begin with preliminaries. This is a more precise description of hypergraphs. It consists of two components, a set of nodes and a set of hyperedges, where each hyperedge is simply a subset of nodes. In the figure below, the edge E1 has size 3, and the theory of node V1 is 2 because it contains two edges, E1 and E2. Also, the neighborhood of node is the set of nodes which are contained together in an edge. So, for example, the neighborhood of node V1 is V4, V2, and V3. Next is an instant matrix of hypergraph, which indicates the memberships of node nodes in the hypergraphs. The entry at i's row and j's column of the matrix has value 1 if the j's hyperedge contains the i's node. Unlike an adjacent matrix, the instance matrix may be a non square matrix. To describe our observations, we especially use the language of distribution in order to reveal macroscopic patterns. Among many distributions, we observed a class of distributions of code heavy tail distribution is something special in our work. As this name suggests, when you plot two quantities on the log log scale, the tail of the distribution is not exponentially bounded. In other words, it decays slower than tails of exponential distributions. The well-known example in this class is the power law distribution, whose formula is as described here. Especially for the power law distribution, one can observe a straight line on the log log plot and which is quite obvious from the definition. At this point, how can you measure the goodness of fit of distribution which is adopted to describe a given data set? Practically and philosophically, it is impossible to assert that the data set genuinely follows some distribution. Rather, our best is like among plausible candidate distributions, we have to determine which distribution has the best fit to the data set. So we use the low likelihood ratio test to compare two or more candidate distributions. In our work, we especially compare several habit tail distributions to exponential distribution. We examine and validate patterns of our interests from various domains such as social interaction, email network, and co-authorship. One remark is, in general, the larger the scale of data set is, the more apparent these patterns are. Now that we are done with base preliminaries, let's dive into the part for static patterns of real-world hypergraphs. The first static pattern we investigate is how the degrees of nodes are distributed. As mentioned, the degree of node is defined as number of hyperarches containing the node. As examined in the previous study, we also confirmed that, that it follows a habit tail distribution. Much more is the well-fitted static lines together with the log likelihood ratio test suggests that the best candidate is a truncated power law distribution, which falls under the class of habitual distribution. The second static pattern we investigated is how the size of hyper edges are distributed, where the size of hyper edge is simply the number of nodes in the hyper edge. We observed that this quantity also follows on habitual distribution. Similar to their distribution, the log likelihood ratio test implies that the truncated power law distribution is the best description available. The third static pattern is how the intersection size of two hyperedges are distributed. For a pair of hyperedges, their intersection size is the number of nodes common in both hyperedges. In other words, this quantity captures the frequency of the pairwise intersection size of hyperedges. The likelihood ratios together with the stat line the figure suggests that the truncated power law is also the most probable description for this pattern. The last structure pattern we examine is 
how the singular values of the instance matrix are distributed. According to our examination, it generally follows a heavy tail distribution. To be specific, the log likelihood ratio test suggests that the log normal distribution has the best fit to the data set. And the log normal distribution also falls under the class of heavy tail distribution. At this point, one may wonder whether these patterns observed until now were actually something remarkable. What I mean is, we still cannot exclude a possibility that these patterns may be sort of just default patterns of random graphs. So we also construct a new model as a counterpart of hypergraph in order to emphasize the peculiarity of these patterns. We design a new model as follows. For a given hypergraph edge sequence, each hyper edge in the original hypergraph induces a corresponding random hyper edge with the same size in the new model. In other words, we force the new model to have the same edge size distribution. Even though this new model is constructed from the strict constraint, it still shows different macroscopic patterns. First, compared to the original hypergraph, we observe the degree distribution of the new model is a skewed belt shaped. Second, for the intersection size distribution, although its offer distribution looks similar, uh, but the range of the intersection size and the frequency of each intersection size are significantly different from the, those of the original hypergraphs. Lastly, for the singular value distribution, we consistently observe a highly dominant singular value. Now let's move on to the temporal patterns of real-world hypergraphs. The first temporal pattern we observe is the intersections of hyperedges become least frequent in overall. When you denote the number of intersecting pairs at time t by yt, and then the number of all possible pairs at time t by xt, we simply plot yt versus xt on the log log scale as seen here. Our observation is the fitted lines on the log log plot have slope strictly less than one. By doing some math, this implies the density of interaction defined by yt over xt decreases over time. So in other words, overall overlaps of hyperedges become less likely over time. For the second and the third temporal patterns, we just revisited well-known dynamical patterns in real-world graphs, which are densification and shrinking diameter. Instead of investigating an ordinary graph obtained by the pairwise reduction, we investigate these patterns on real hypergraphs as they are, and then we confirm that this still takes place in this setting. Let me start with densification. When we plot the number of hyper edges versus the number of vertices on the log log scale, we observe that the slope of the fitted line is distinctly larger than 1 as seen in the figure. Doing some math gives us these relationships, and it can be translated into the rise of average degree of hypergraphs over time. The third pattern is the phenomenon of shrinking diameter. In the hypergraph setting, diameter is defined as the maximum of distance between any pair of nodes, where the distance is the number of hyper edges required to move from one to another. We actually investigated the effective diameter, which is more robust to outliers, and we observed that the effective diameter eventually starts to decrease over time. Along with these established patterns in real-world hypergraphs, we go further by proposing a gross model to explain what local dynamics cause these static and temporal patterns. We propose a model called Hypergraph Forest Fire, which adopts a forest fire scheme to generate hyperedges. In essence, when a new node arrives, Fire is randomly spread through existing hyperedges so that it decides the new nose neighbors. And then, our model stim simulates the forest fire again to extend each created hyperedge. To regulate this dynamic, we only need two probability parameters, which are burning probability and expanding probability. Let me describe our model through example of co-assertion network. Suppose a new graduate student who is node U in this figure joins the research community. The student chooses his advisor who is node W and making this new relationship is said to be burning the node W. As of now, the student would like to work together with the advisor's peers. When introducing peers, 
the advisor W is more likely to choose intimate peers rather than just random peers. So it's reasonable to take into account sort of tight strengths between those in doing so. Introducing someone new based on the advisor is similar to the phenomenon that the fire based on the advisor spread through his network. And that's why this procedure is called burst fire. Our model determines the number, number of burning neighbors of the advisor by drawing the number from geometric distribution. One note I would like to make is, when the burning probability P is close to 1, the mean of distribution goes to infinity. Whereas the probability close to 0 makes the mean also close to 0. So the burning probability can regulate the intensity of the spread of the fire. Those who co-work with the student are also likely to introduce their colleagues based on their networks for follow-up research. And this situation is encoded through recursive burning, which starts from the, these burned neighbors, which are V2 and V3 in this illustration. Here, we set, a, we set that a node is burned at most once, and it makes sure the termination of the recursion. Suppose the fire from V2 is put out, but the fire from V3 continues to spread out V4 and V5. <clears throat> once the recursive introduction is done, the model adds the size to hyperedge between students and the colleagues introduced, and then increases the high strength by one between them. Now that we have size 2 interaction between nodes, we somehow need to expand these edges to express high, higher order interactions. What is a plausible way to do so? Suppose a research group which corresponds to a hyperedge was looking for a new fellow to work together. In this case, a referral in this group is likely to introduce his or her colleagues who the referral has worked with several times before rather than just totally a new person. So after hyperedge expansion, the result would be like this. The model encodes this mechanism once again through the first fire scheme with the parameter code expanding probability Q. By viewing the new incoming node as a new ambassador, the first fire once again spreads out. The intensity of the spread also can be controlled by the expanding probability Q. For properly set parameters, our model successfully reproduces the four static patterns in real-world hypergraphs while it doesn't artificially impose the, these patterns. These are the habitual distribution of degree, edge size, intersection size, and singular values. Our model also achieves dynamical patterns which are decreasing overlaps, densification, and shrinking diameters. To sum up, our model HyperFF successfully reproduces all examine patterns without any help of external information given in advance. All the model needs are two parameters, burning and expanding probability. Also, it has a simple and intuitive mechanism that makes sense as illustrated through the example of co-authorship. And moreover, it does not directly impose, but eventually lead to the examine patterns. Now, let's wrap up this presentation. In summary, we examine four static patterns and three dynamic patterns of real-world hypergraphs. Also, we propose a generative model, HyperFF, which is successfully reproduces all seven patterns. For reproducibility, we release the code and dataset in the following link. Thanks for your attention.